Good morning, everyone. This week's Torah portion contains the famous story of God telling Moses to speak to the rock so it will produce water for the Jewish nation in the desert. And Moses strikes the rock rather than speaking to the rock, and he is punished, and he is told by God, because you failed to sanctify my name amongst the Jewish people by speaking to the rock and producing water, you will not enter into the land of Israel. And despite Moshe Rabbeinu's numerous pleas and prayers and requests of God to be allowed entry into the land of Israel, Moses dies in the desert and never enters the land of Israel. And while there are many questions about this story, there is a very powerful metaphor being set for us in this fascinating story, which has eternal lessons and implications. And that is there sometimes God tells us to do something that we can't understand. We feel like it's speaking to a rock. It can never happen. And we fail to remember that God can do anything. It may seem to you that it's impossible. It's beyond your ability. How can a rock produce water? But yet God says, you have to have faith. And when I ask you to do something, you have to carry out my mission because you may not realize yourself what you're capable of doing. You may feel like you're deaf, like a rock. You can't absorb this mission, this message, this, this directive. But know that God can produce water from a rock. God can do the impossible. And therefore, with faith, you must carry out God's instruction. And if you don't, you may be jeopardizing and forfeiting your entry into the land of Israel. Your potential may not be realized and your promised land may, by, may, may not be reached simply because you fail to have faith in God's promise and mission for your life. You know, you ever get a phone call and someone starts talking to you and you say, sorry, I think you got the wrong number. And then you hang up and then they call back again and you say, no, 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 you got the wrong number. And sometimes they'll even call a third time and say, you got the wrong number. Well, sometimes God calls us and says, hey, I need you to do something. You say, no, no, God, you got the wrong number. It can't be me. And you try to hang up or disconnect. But then you get a second call and a third call until you realize that God is saying to you, no, there's no wrong numbers. I'm AT&T. I gave you your number. I know the number to your soul. And I'm calling you. And that's what happened to Moses in the beginning of his mission. When God came to him at the burning bush, he said, no, 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 God, you got the wrong number. It can't be me. You must be looking for my brother Aaron. And this is what happened when God came to Jonah and said, I want you to go save the city of Nineveh. And Jonah said, no, 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 God, not me. And he runs away. And then he gets thrown overboard and he's swallowed up by a whale. And then God calls him in the belly of the whale and says, can you hear me now? I'm calling you. And that's what happened with Abraham when God said, a great nation is going to come from you. And Abraham says, but I don't have any children. You must mean someone else. And God says, no, look at the stars. You will have a great nation. Many times we don't realize our own potential. And therefore, we have to realize that when God calls us, He's calling us because He knows our true potential. And we have to listen even when we don't understand how we're going to carry out this mission. We had Rabbi Brisky with us this Shabbat. And he told a story that he once got a call from a rabbi who's in Utah. And he said, my... I have a girl here who's going through rehab here, going through some difficulties. Her mother lives in a city next to you on Lakeside. Maybe call her and bring her some Shabbat candles. So Rabbi Brisky calls this woman and she says, No, Rabbi, I'm not religious. I don't like Shabbat candles. They're wrong person you're calling. Rabbi Brisky says, No, it will be good for your spiritual blessing and merit for your daughter who's going through this difficulty. And then she says, Well, Rabbi, I'm not home anyway, so you can't bring me the candles. He said, where are you? He says, I'm in a different town. Which town? I'm in Agoura Hills right now. He says, really? Where in Agoura Hills are you? She says, uh, I'm on this in the street. We are on this in the street. I'm in the gas station. I'm, I'm, uh, you caught me on my phone. I'm pumping gas. Rabbi Risky says, okay, when you finish pumping gas, pull out of the gas station, make a left, and I'll be the rabbi standing outside waving for you, holding a candle, Shabbat candlestick for you. The woman happened to be pumping gas in the gas station right next to the Chabad house of Rabbi Brisky. 
Sure enough, she pulls out her gas station, makes a left, and there's Rabbi Brisky waiting for her with a candle. She couldn't believe it. Gave her the candle, said, your daughter should be well, light the Shabbat candles. Rabbi Brisky didn't see this woman for 25 years. 25 years later, he ran into her. And he said, so how are you doing? He says, my daughter is doing great. She recovered. She is now a therapist herself, helping at risk teens. And then she says to Rabbi Brisky, I want you to know, for 25 years since you gave me those Shabbat candles, I never missed a Friday of lighting Shabbat candles. God knows our number. God calls us to do things. And sometimes they think, seem more than just difficult. They think impossible. It may feel like I'm speaking to a rock. It's a waste of time. But God says, I can produce fresh living waters, even from a rock. All you need to do is have faith in me and faith in your own potential. Have a wonderful day.